Welcome to Review Every Ship by CitizenCon 2024. The point is to give an update on every ship since some haven't had a video made about them in years and others, the information is simply too spread out to be helpful in making decisions. Remember, digital ships aren't imaginary, digital ships are imagine necessary. A quick shout out to my Joni Ninja members, Radium TX and Palin Tan, and my Chuni Ninja members, Walk on Yosai, Rage One, Scorpion King, and Meat Salad. Of course, any person who watches my videos, thank you so much, especially to those members, because membership is never required, but always appreciated. You help make this YouTube dream even more possible. So thank you. Every month we do a giveaway to give back to this wonderful community. This month's giveaway prize has yet to be determined. Well, it has kind of been determined, but we just have to see if we can actually give it away because it's a ship that I've never given away before. And it's kind of CIG dependent. Anyway, to enter the contest, make sure you're subscribed to Billionaire Ninjas. Leave a comment on at least one video and like or dislike a video. Winners have two weeks to claim their prize. Members collectively have a 25% chance of winning just for being members. So if you're subscribed, consider hitting that join button. And if you're not subscribed, I appreciate you hitting that subscribe button. For the full giveaway details, make sure you visit our Billionaire Ninjas Discord or our social media at Ninjas Leap. Today, we begin our short trip with the Gatak manufacturer. We have reached the Gatak Raylan and it has zero variants. For the price, the Raylan as of 3.24 is 225 standalone, 200 warbond, and was 200 at concept. In game cost is unknown, and the in game three day rental price is unknown. This ship is not currently sold at all. However, it is a limited ship. That ship cannot be rented in game as of 3.24. And I mean, not currently sold in the game, of course. Gatak's first foray into the human market. The Raylan is an elegant interspecies vessel, perfect for any human or Xion pilot looking for a safe, reliable solution for commercial grade medium cargo hauling utilizing patented grav lev technology and time-tested designs updated for 2951 and beyond the Raylan is a prime example of why the xion empire has trusted house gatak with production of its industrial vessels for centuries the gatak Raylan, or is it rylan <laughs> Somebody give him some water, please. For measurements, the Raylan has a length of 53 meters, beam of 52 meters, height of 67 meters, very boxy, and it is a size 4 large ship. Its minimum crew is 1 and its maximum crew is 4. It can carry 320 SCU. The claim time for the Raylan is unknown, but I would say an educated guess on this is above 20 minutes. Expedited, I would say, is about 8 minutes, and the expedited fee should be above 30,000 credits. This is based on ships of similar size or similar purpose, but just remember, there's always an alien tax. The Raylan's top speed are unknown, but it is said to be more agile than expected due to the Xion thruster technology that was listed in the brochure. So looking at ships in the size four area, I would take a guess it's slower than a Mercury Star Runner, but faster than a Valkyrie. So to put that in numbers, we're probably talking around 200 SCM speed and 1150 nav max speed. For maneuverability, I would guess it's around the same story, but a ship marketed so squarely in the blockade runner realm to be at the highest level with the alien tech, I would not be surprised if this is the most maneuverable ship in the size four large ship class. For fuel, I would assume it will have high capacity as alien ships tend to be towards the higher end, but not at the top. I would say hydrogen capacity above the Connie Taurus, but lower than the Valkyrie or Mercury. But when it comes to quantum fuel, it will most likely be top five in its class. So hydrogen fuel a little lower, but quantum fuel a little higher. For weapons, the Raylan has no weapons, no remote turrets, but it does have two manned size four turrets and 16 size one missiles split between two racks and four size two missiles split between two racks. For ship parts, the Raylan has one medium radar, one medium computer, one large power plant, two large coolers, two large shield generators, two medium fuel intakes, two medium fuel tanks, one medium quantum drive, one medium jump module, and one medium quantum fuel tank. The hull HP for the Raylan, 
I'm guessing it will be near the bottom of the barrel for its class, but not the worst. I'm guessing more than the 400i, but less than the Redeemer. The shields on the Raylan, I'm thinking, are going to be pretty hefty since it lacks the HP pool of most other ships its size. So I'm guessing civilian grade B coming stock, and we're talking like 200k total HP and a 2000 HP per second regen rate when we're talking about those civilian grade B shield parts. For quantum stats, the Raylan, I'm guessing, is going to be interstellar and that means you can travel anywhere in the system multiple times without refueling and will also have fuel to make it to your next destination in a neighboring star system that's like the highest standard for long distance travel it's a cargo ship after all and it does need to be able to go anywhere to deliver that payload especially at the medium size you could be going anywhere for special features and amenities it will basically be a little home away from home from what you can learn in the brochure and the announcements. It's literally in the brochure says fully loaded living space. So sleeping pods, full kitchen, tons of seating, and because it's a cargo ship, tons of storage. It will have Gravlev because it's Xi'an Tech. It will also have a really unique triangular cargo hold. It's not like the whole sea where your cargo is unprotected. The cargo goes inside the triangular cargo holds in separate areas, making it more difficult to steal and protecting it more. But don't worry, it will still have standardized cargo units. My preferred loadout for this will come later once the ship is in game, but I'm guessing it will mostly be a mix of civilian and competition components and guns or missiles meant to disable rather than destroy. Now it's time to rate this ship i rate from one to ten my one is only buy if you have a unique reason that is specific to you or because you like the looks of the ship my 10 is basically if you have the money this ship is almost guaranteed to be useful to you in the game a one doesn't mean the ship is useless or ugly and a 10 doesn't mean that the ship is perfect just remember this is just our rating please give us yours in the comments down below and we will put them in tiny envelopes and mail them to ourselves so we can open them like tiny message gifts my rating for the ship overall is an eight. Let's start with what I like about this ship. I think this ship is what they wanted the whole series to be, but didn't figure it out until it was too late. That being said, it's different in all the ways I like. The cargo is covered, it's fast, it carries enough cargo to last until the end game, it's got decent firepower when the turrets are manned, and missiles to keep curious people away. And did I mention this is one of the best looking ships in the game? It has one of the best paint skins in the entire game. It's tied at number one for me. That Hayatoan paint, I don't, know, I don't know if I'm saying it right, but it starts with an H and it's a Raylan paint. Look it up, it's amazing. When I think of how I want CIG to design a concept ship, this one is on the short list for how to do it in a way that is exciting, unique, and makes people look twice. Good job, CIG. Now, what are the issues with this and how would I fix it? I don't understand the choice of not giving this ship dedicated pilot weapons. I get that it's a traitor and it isn't meant to really dogfight, but look at the Connie Taurus with its size fives, the Caterpillar with its size threes. The whole concept of this ship is how high tech it is and it doesn't even have a remote turret. I think that's a little weird too. I do think this would be the perfect candidate for quad turrets, but just in case that sounds a little biased because I like the ship. At the very least, I would make the standard turrets remote and give the pilot the ability to shoot them forward. I know that AI blades are coming, I just think, shouldn't those be included, especially in this specific ship, because of how people talk about its amazing technology? I just think that's the way it should be. So either those quad turrets or those AI blades that let the current turrets face forward when the pilot is controlling them. But hey. The ship's still in concept, so you never know. Even if they weren't pilot controlled though, I still argue that they should be remote controlled with everyone in the cockpit so the pilot could change seats if necessary. It literally has four seats in the cockpit. I'm hoping they catch that before it goes live because it just doesn't make sense that those aren't remote turrets. I also think anything that is bespoke should be beyond reproach. So I would give this thing a size five missile rack with four size four missiles for larger threats to replace the size three missile rack. I think that would give it a better ability to attack a wider range of ships. So who is this ship for? This ship simply fills an empty hole where you would rather do your cargo missions without requiring an escort. It's for the cargo runners that want something different. You can run it solo if you're a good enough pilot, 
but it's made to have a crew and the crew of four I think will really make this shine. You want a better fighting cargo ship? Get a Connie Taurus. It's $35 cheaper and has size 5 weapons. But be prepared because that thing flies like a brick and also carries 45% less cargo. You want better cargo capacity? Get a Caterpillar. Except it flies even more like a brick, can't carry 32 SCU containers, and costs $100 more. The whole B? More cargo and $85 cheaper as well. But that one flies like a boat with bricks on it. Problem? Yes. And now your cargo is out for all the world to see. And you definitely will need escorts because they're probably going to steal that cargo if you don't have people watching your back. So the Raylan seems to take a little bit from each of those ships, but seems to be greater than the sum of its parts. So why is it an eight? Every time I load a hull C, a C2 or a Caterpillar, I'm just like, this feels like I'm loading a warehouse that happens to be a ship. That might work for ships like the Ironclad, where it's quite literally is a warehouse that happens to be a ship, but otherwise it feels a bit bland during the process, especially with the C2 not having any tractor beams. But in walks the extremely cool transforming Gatak Raylan with its triangular pods, unique lighting, grav lev tech. It just seems like it adds an element of fun to perhaps the most boring part of the cargo trade. However, it's alien. And that means a few weird things on the interior. Pair that with the fact that I think the missiles are slightly wrong and the fact that the turrets are manned instead of remote and it drops a few points from excellence. I imagine using this ship as my go-to cargo ship and more specifically, exactly as it's designed, a blockade runner. I think this ship will end up being the best blockade runner in the game when it's all said and done, or should I say all said and balanced. I will self-load my cargo with a few friends of hired workers maybe, or maybe it's some actual NPCs, we'll see, and then speed my way through Pyro to deliver to the most dangerous locations. Well, not the most dangerous, but like third most dangerous because, you know, I, I wouldn't have escorts unless they give me my quad turrets, of course, because then, then, then I go pew pew. Anyway, I know you're here for our rating, but if you really want to ship, Go buy it, we won't stop you, or even better, all ships can be earned in-game once the game releases, and some you can purchase in-game right now. These are just our ratings, but when you spend, it's your money. My opinion, this ship isn't for everyone, but it's definitely a value to anyone who owns it. It's still in concept, so we'll have to test it when it comes out because it could easily overpromise and underdeliver. But I must admit, I like what I see. This one is definitely one for the fleet. That's why I own one myself. The Raylan is one of the few alien ships that might be worth the tax. All right, that is it for this one. Thanks for spending your time with us. Shout out to the members. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.